I keep on reading this analysis that, well, you know, Trump's got support from, like, working folks. Really? That, like, this is the guy you want to be championing working people? This guy who spent 70 years on this earth showing no concern for working people. This guy's suddenly going to be your champion? That was President Obama this week in Philadelphia in his first solo campaign event on behalf of Hillary Clinton. It's part of a surrogate surge in Pennsylvania that is intended to shore up that critical swing state. The latest Quinnipiac University poll shows that Clinton's lead over Donald Trump has been cut in half there from 10 points in August to five points this month. It's just one of several battleground states where the race is tightening, with new polls in Ohio and Florida showing Donald Trump in the lead. John Brabender is a Republican strategist and was a senior advisor to former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum's 2016 presidential campaign. So welcome back, and I got to give you Thanks, props. Paul. You were saying this was possible. Uh, now, what do you think is behind this, uh, this uh, Trump surge? Well, first of all, I think there's two things that are happening. Number one, Hillary Clinton, as we know, have had two or three really bad weeks, some um, controversial things with the foundation. Right. I think there are legitimate questions where people are saying, eh, maybe there is something there with their health. We saw that demonstrated last weekend. But I think more importantly, the movement has been because of changes Donald Trump has made. I think that... Frankly, I got to give a lot of credit to the people that came in and are now running his campaign because they seem to coincide. He seems more presidential. What's happening is there's a lot of people who were voting for Hillary even though they really didn't want to because they didn't see Donald Trump as a viable alternative. For the first time, they're seeing Donald Trump for a, as a viable alternative, and we're seeing the poll numbers change. And ultimately what this means is instead of Donald Trump now having one path to victory, he probably has about three different paths to get to 270. You mean the electoral vote count through, through a very, various numbers of states. The field has, has, has expanded. But here's with a question. Uh, I, I would talk to Republicans who said that when Trump was having his bad patch, the, uh, the polls just, the bottom fell out of his support in the collar counties that you know so well, for example, in Philadelphia, around Philadelphia, that a Republican has to do pretty well in to be able to win the state. Now that it has come back. Is it because he's looking more presidential? In, 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 and how important are those collar counties if he's going to win the state? Well, Pennsylvania as a state is a very, you know, parochial state, but not a very homogeneous state. Uh, you have sort of very conservative Democrats in the West, but relatively moderate Republicans in the East. And that's where his Achilles heels has been so far. What I do think is happening is, first of all, I think his policies of recent. I mean, look what he did this week. He did a big speech on child care, put out his initiative. Where did he do it? Delaware County, Pennsylvania, right. right outside of Philadelphia. Who's he targeting? Obviously, it's white, college-educated, moderate women in, in that region as well as the rest of the country. And so I think they're being very smart strategically as far as the initiatives are putting out, but also his tone and tenor, I believe, has changed. And I think that that's been very helpful, and that's part of the reason for the movement. All right, but uh, uh, he's still trailing in, in Pennsylvania in the latest poll by about five, where he's already caught up in Ohio and in Florida. Pennsylvania is a more Democratic state at the presidential level than either of those two. Uh, would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, let's put it in perspective. A Republican hasn't won for president in Pennsylvania since 1988. And so it is an uphill battle, but he's also now getting encouraging news in places like Michigan, Colorado, Iowa, Nevada. So even if he doesn't win Pennsylvania for the first time, I think there's other viable options and paths to get to 270. What do you think Trump ought to focus on from here to the end of the uh, end of the election if he wants to pick up these uh, these uh, swing states? I, I, and particularly, I'm thinking Michigan and Pennsylvania because it looks like even if he wins Ohio and Florida, even if he picks up Iowa, even if he holds Romney states like uh, North Carolina and Arizona. Arizona, he's got to pick up one of those two. Right. Well, look, I do messaging for a living, and my belief is this race is really not about Hillary Clinton anymore. Her numbers are, are baked into the cake, as we say. People have known her for 24 years. What you think of her, you do. What he has to do to close the sale is have people have some confidence in him on, as a, on a personal level. 
For example, I think he should be featured in all his ads instead of them being either critical of Hillary Clinton or just a voiceover. I think people want to get to know and trust him because there's a lot of people who already have an unfavorable opinion of Hillary Clinton who are yet to be voting for Trump. So they want to know that Donald Trump is somebody they could feel at least comfortable with in the Oval Office. They know it's a risk because he's an unknown, but they want to see, okay, I can get, I can get my head around listening to that guy in the Oval Office and think he's actually going to be competent in the job. It's that, it's that kind of fundamental, fundamental comfort level you're talking about. Absolutely. In fact, I call it the cocktail party test. They want to be able to go to a neighborhood party or their country club party or whatever and say, yes, I decided I'm voting for Donald Trump and not get bad looks. <laughs> well, maybe they won't admit that they're going to vote for Donald Trump. There's that <laughs> phenomenon out there, I, I, I assume. I think that's true. I think and in places like Pennsylvania, I mean, Donald Trump won 67 of all the counties in the primary. That usually doesn't happen. But there's uh, this means what I'm hearing you're saying is the debates are going to be utterly crucial for Trump because he has to speak directly to the American people on a stage without a script and actually sound like he's uh, like he can hold his own. I think that's right. I think also his interaction with Hillary Clinton will be important as well. I think if he walks in there and acts like a prosecutor who is there just to skewer him, her, he is not doing himself any favors. I think if he can be critical of her, but in a way that people don't find offensive, I think that's, that's beneficial to him. All right. Thank you, John Brabender. I appreciate your coming in.